Are you ready to downsize and looking for a little bit of inspiration? Well, today I've got a book for you called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And it is a really unique perspective on downsizing. I'm professional organizer Katherine Lawrence, and I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have space for what truly matters. Today I'm doing a summary of a popular downsizing book called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And it is by Margareta Magnusson, and she is, of course, Swedish. And uh, this book is really great for anyone who is either looking to downsize in their own home, their own possessions, or is the child of someone who is in need of downsizing. So what is death cleaning? Um, basically what, and I think what we would call it in the United States is downsizing. And it's the act of reviewing all of the possessions in your home and making a decision about what is going to happen to them. And she describes the act of death cleaning as, um, going through all my belongings and deciding how to get rid of things I do not want anymore. Just look around you. Several of your things have probably been there for so long that you do not even see or value them anymore. This is a tiny little book. It's just over a hundred pages and it's filled with insights, I would say, for organizing and downsizing, and also a lot of stories. I, I kind of get the sense that she was going through a downsize herself and probably struggling with a few things and ended up writing some things down, some challenges that she was facing and some solutions that she came up with, and that has turned into a book. So who is this book for? Uh, the author describes herself as somewhere in the age range of 80 to 100, but she says that the perfect age for downsizing is in your 60s because you still have a lot of energy to do that. But also if this book finds you at age 30 or 40 or 50, it's, there's still some great tips in there for decluttering. So no matter what age you are, if you are interested in decluttering, this is a good book to pick up and um, read through and get some inspiration. This is also a good book if you are helping your parents to downsize or if you are encouraging your parents to downsize. And she actually has a few, um, I guess, phrases that she would use to approach the idea of downsizing with a parent. So on page 32 of the book, she offers some advice on, um, or, or some phrases that you could say to a parent to get them to start thinking about downsizing. So you could ask, you have many nice things. Have you thought about what you want to do with them later on? Do you enjoy having all of this stuff? Could life be easier and less tiring if we got rid of some of this stuff that you have collected over the years? And is there anything we can do together in a slow way so that there won't be too many things to handle later? She recommends going into storage areas first, uh, attics, storage units, basements, garages. And her rationale for that is that since things have been out of sight and out of mind for so long, those are probably the things that you can live without. There's also a big theme in the book about not burdening the next generation with the things in your home that you want to have things in order um, instead of passing on a house full or a lifetime of possessions to the next generation. 
So in the book, she's often talking about her children and her grandkids and interactions with them, passing things along to them, what things they wanted, what things they had no interest in, and um, just how she's sort of chunking through this lifetime of possessions that, um, that she has and is trying to part with. Something that she comes back to again and again in the book about that this is really a, a slow process. It's something that can take many months, if not a year or more. And this book really walks you through how to approach it at a very gentle rate. Um, and it's something that she, she says in the book, uh, particularly caught my attention because I work as a professional organizer and I help people go through this process, but usually very quickly, you know, I may work in a home for three days or a few weeks or you know, a few visits over a couple of weeks and do this at a, at a pretty quick pace because, maybe the house is going on the market or someone has had to move to assisted living. So, and, and she addresses that in the book and she says that actually it may be better for you to do this on your own and take your time, whether rather than having a professional come in and try to knock it out in a few days or a few weeks. So I thought that was really interesting since I'm usually coming at it from a different approach, which is to get it done very quickly. She also has a recommendation of where you should not start with downsizing, and that is looking through old letters and photographs. And the reason for this is that you can get so caught up in reminiscing and looking through those things that you really aren't going to be able to do your downsizing in a, an efficient manner that your, your mind is just going to want to look through all of these items and relive those memories. And you won't really get that far on your, the task that you wanted to get accomplished that day. And in the book, she does go into specific categories. Um, like there's a little section on kitchen and clothing and collectibles. And she talks about how she got advice on what to sell and working with, um, what we would call an estate agent to do an auction and, um, how she found, found unique ways to let go of things, whether that was, you know, finding a specific agency that was interested in, um, certain belongings and also approaching friends and uh, children about taking some things and how important really it was to like, tell the story of, the item. So just this act of giving things away while you are still alive and that you can share that story when you're passing something along, um, that seemed to be really important to her. Um, instead of just, you know, her children coming in and, and having a big auction after she was gone, but actually having those personal stories with the items um, given to the next recipient a along with that item. So along with the stories and, um, sort of life anecdotes, she also has some pretty practical advice. Um, so for example, when she was downsizing in with her own possessions, she, in her house, she had a room that she labeled keep and a room that she labeled move and one that was giveaway and one that was throwaway. And so she had these physically like different, different physical spaces in her home where she could sort things. So she could take uh, something to the giveaway room. And then when she had a grandchild or a child or a friend come over, she could go to that room and say, you know, here are things that I'm giving away. You know, would you like this thing? Um, or even putting very specific labels 
on the items to give away. You know, where is it going? Who is she giving it away to? And uh, keeping a list of those things so that when, when you do meet up with someone who you want to give these things to, then um, you're already ready. It's, it's there in this space. And so that keeps you mentally straight on what is going where. You know, the things that you're going to keep with you versus the things that you're throwing away and, and giving away. One thing that I think is really hard for people is um, passing on or letting go of things that they have received as a gift. So something that someone gave to you, you know, how do you pass that on to someone else or how do you get rid of it? And she has a little passage here that says, if I give a present to someone, I understand it may not stay with that person forever. Do any of us really keep track of everything we give away? I don't. Things break. Even a popcorn machine does not work for eternity. I will never feel guilty for not keeping presents forever. To be grateful and happy for a present when you receive it is something different because that gratitude is not connected to the thing itself, but the giver who gave it to you. And so I really like this point that you receive that gift and, and that's really the important piece is you have gratitude from it, uh, or for it. And that someone took the time to think of you and give you this thing. That's, that's really where, <laughs> I mean, that's the most important connection. Um, so you, know, if you have received a gift, something someone gave you years ago, but you have no use for it now, don't feel guilty that, um, you no longer use it or need it because really the connection happened when the gift was given. And now you are going to pass that on to someone else and have that other connection, but none of the guilt. So she keeps coming back to this theme of, um, I guess getting rid of things while you, um, still have the energy and sort of mental and physical energy to do that while, you know, you're, you're still here and you can connect with those things. And, um, I like this little passage. She says that if you cannot find anyone to give your possessions to sell them and make a donation to charity, if you don't death clean and show people what is valuable, once you die, there will be a big truck that takes all the wonderful things you have to an auction at best or a dump. No one will be happy about that. Well, the auction house might be. So I would say overall, this is a very cheery book, despite it um, covering such a, I guess what can be seen as a, certainly a very hard job to review all of your possessions, um, and, and face that. But, you know, despite its title, you know, death cleaning, it is pretty uplifting. I mean, she tells some really cool stories and, you know, she reminisces about, um, trips that she has taken with her family. And, you know, as I was reading it, I was thinking that, anyone who's going through a downsize, it may really be helpful to write down stories as they are downsizing because that's really what she's doing here is reminiscing about, you know, trips that the family took together or, um, she talks a lot about her, her, their dining table, you know, their kitchen table that they have all of these wonderful memories on. So it's, it seems like that would be its its own technique is to actually write down stories or share stories while you're downsizing, whether you're taking a video of them or writing them down, not, not really for a book to be published or maybe so, but just to process all of this 
you know, sorting and confronting all of these possessions and these things and to actually write notes and interact with people and to tell stories. I would imagine that would be um, very therapeutic and uh, it's certainly what she's done with this book. In some of her final thoughts, she says, um, in this book, I wanted to get you started with your cleaning and making you feel good when you think of all the hours you will have saved your loved ones because they will not have to use their precious time to take care of stuff you do not want yourself anymore. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this summary of The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. Uh, this book is available on Amazon. There's also an audio version of the book, and you can get that on uh, Audible dot com or also through Amazon and uh, it's a pretty quick listen I think it's about two hours long and uh, I would definitely recommend this for anyone who is going through a downsize themselves or encouraging uh, parents or friends who are going through downsizing I think there's a lot of good inspiration there and some fun stories and um, she hopes that it's a you know, a light book, even though it's a pretty heavy topic. And I, I think she accomplished that. So I uh, hope you pick up a copy, enjoy that, and uh, happy organizing.